So we were talking about the conduction system and the waveforms that it makes, but we need to look at how do we pick up those waveforms? How are we actually able to see them? And we need some type of monitoring system. So this class, we're going to be looking at telemetry monitoring, which is one view monitoring. It is not 12 lead ECG interpretation. So normally when we monitor, and there are different, there's multiple different leads we can monitor in, but the most common monitoring leads are lead two and MCL, which is modified chest lead one. And then there's also five lead systems. So there's three and five lead systems, and you will see a monitoring box, which will transmit with leads attached to it, which you put electrodes on the chest, you attach these leads to the electrodes, and this transmitter box will transmit that pattern up to the front desk or to the main monitor so people can actually look at it and take strips off of it. When we are... Um, looking at lead two, which is probably the most common monitoring lead, if we have a three lead system, the white electrode is going to go towards the right arm. And a lot of times on top of the electrode, it'll say RA for right arm. And that doesn't mean it has to be over here on the right arm. It's on the chest, but towards the right arm. If you have them on the arms themselves, anytime the patient moves, it's going to pick up artifact or pick up um, a poor signal. The black electrode will say LA on it for left arm. And again, it's going to be on the chest towards the left arm. And the red electrode, which will say LL on it, is towards the left leg. It's still going to be on the chest, but it's going to be lower on the chest towards the left leg. Now, this is lead two. And your positive electrode, which is the red one, Things are picked up on ECG paper as to how they are going towards the positive electrode. So if the signal is going towards the positive electrode, on ECG paper, the waveforms are going to be upright. Your P wave will be upright. Your QRS will be upright. If things are going away from the positive electrode, then things will go below the isoelectric line. P wave would go down. QRS would go down. So depending on what lead you're monitoring, is what your waveforms, whether they're going to go above the isoelectric line or below. The reason lead two is the most common monitoring lead is because things are seen, though if you think about the normal conduction of the heart, it starts up in the SA node, which is over here, travels through the atria to the AV node, travels down the ventricles. So it's heading in this direction generally because your heart's tilted a little bit to the left. So if things are being seen as going through the heart towards the positive electrode, your waveforms are going upright. And that's just easier to look at. So it's not that lead two tells us more than other leads. It's just simpler to look at. And that's why it's the most common monitoring lead. So here it's showing you um, that... So this one here is MCL, modified chest lead one. And in modified chest lead one, your white electrode, which is the negative one, goes here towards the left arm. Your black one, which is your ground, goes over here towards the right arm. And then that red one is goes in the fourth intercostal space to the right of the sternal border. So now the electricity, as it's coming through the heart, again, is it going towards the positive electrode or away from the positive electrode? So when it's coming here, so if things start in the SA node and it's traveling here through the atria, that, depending on the tilt of the heart and exactly where you place this positive electrode, your P wave may go upright or it may go half up, half down. Okay, and that's that both of those can be normal for a MCL, a modified chest lead one. But then as the impulse is traveling through the ventricles, you can see here it's kind of going away from this positive electrode. So the biggest bulk of your QRS goes down. It is negative. It goes below the isoelectric line. So when you're looking at waveforms, looking at something that is going all upright versus something that's going half up, half down, again, lead to just is a little bit easier. Now, the five lead systems, you stick the leads on the same way every single time, and you just change on the, up on the monitoring screen which direction you want it to read from. So the white one, RA, goes towards right arm. The black goes towards the left arm. The red goes towards the left leg. Now you have a green one, and the green one goes towards the right leg. And then the brown one is, we'll say, V1, and that goes towards 
the fourth intercostal space to the right of the sternal border. And then you can just change the vector from the machine, whether you want it to read or lead to, if you want it to go read an MC MCL, and it'll just change the direction vector that it's reading. So 12 lead monitoring is, of course, tells you more. It gives you the picture of the heart in 12 different views, which is always going to give you more information than what one view monitoring can. But this is not practical to walk around in or to be wearing for three or four days while you're in the hospital. So telemetry monitoring is a much better day-to-day um, -day type of um, way to monitor someone. But if you have a person that's having chest pain or having trouble or having an abnormal rhythm, they are always going to want you to get a 12 lead ECG so you can see what it looks like in all the different views. So our waveforms again, we have our P wave, which tells us our atrial depolarization. The atria got the message. We only know if it comes, the P wave is just telling us the atria got the message. If the P wave we said is normal, rounded, and symmetrical, then we know it came from the sinus node. Then we have that hold in the AV node, which hopefully that's when the atria are actually contracting. And then that impulse travels through the ventricles, giving us our QRS complex. So that's ventricular depolarization. And then ventricular repolarization, it starts with a, should be a flat ST segment, and then it goes into the T wave. Now your QRS cycle that has multiple different variations to it. But regardless of what the variation is, we still refer to it as the QRS cycle. So for instance, and this is going to sound a little odd the way I'm saying this, but the Q is the first negative before the R. It's not the first negative, it's the first negative before the R. The S is the first negative deflection after the R. So normally a QRS complex has that negative deflection, goes up for a big positive deflection, comes down for a little negative deflection, and then it goes back flat or isoelectric. That's our QRS complex. But here, this one here, I have a negative deflection, so it'd be a Q. It goes up. That's my R. This one doesn't have an S. This is technically a QR waveform, but we still refer to it as the QRS. This one here is nothing's going upwards. So it's just a QS waveform is what it's referred to, but we still look at it as the QRS. This one here is an R and then it comes down. So that's an S. So it's an RS waveform, but again, we would refer, refer to it as a QRS complex. And then this one here, this is the R, it comes down. So it's an S, it goes back up. So it's an R prime. And then if it happens to go down again, it would be an S prime. So you may see many, many variations of the QRS waveform. And part of that may be lead placement. Part of it may be conduction issues that the person has, conduction defects, um, abnormal beats. But the, there's a lot of variations to our QRS waveform, but we will still refer to it as the QRS. The ST segment, this is the beginning of ventricular repolarization. So your ST segment, so after our S wave, this ST segment should be flat. It should be isoelectric, okay? It should come back to the flat line. And then we get our T wave, which is the rest of ventricular depolarization. So the ST segment should be isoelectric. And you always want to look at the ST segment because if you have ST elevation or depression, um, there. With, with a normal width QRS, and, and I'm saying this, a normal width QRS, because we will be learning um, next week about bundle branch blocks, but normal QRS, um, if you have ST elevation or ST depression with a normal QRS, it may mean that you have, if it's elevated, it's acute injury happening, and if it's depressed, it can still potentially be injury or it may be old injury. So here's examples of ST segment issues. So here I have my P wave. I dip down for a little tiny Q, comes up for the R, but instead of coming back isoelectric, going flat and going into my T wave, this S from my S, it just scoops right on over into my T. So you can see here's my baseline, here's my isoelectric line, and the, my ST segment's all the way up here and just runs into the T wave. So that is an elevated ST segment, and it is a sign of injury. It's a sign of, you know, that the person's probably having a heart attack. Here is um, ST segment depression with T, this one happens to have T wave inversion. So what's happening here is I have a P wave, atrial depolarization, 
baby Q comes up from my R, but instead of my, and it comes down for the S, but then instead of coming back isoelectric, going flat and going into the T, my S, my S just scoops on down and goes right into the T. So my ST segment is, is below the isoelectric line and the T wave inverts. So this one here, I have ST depression with T wave inversion. And that it can potentially be injury or it can also be an old injury as well. So when we're looking at ST segment elevation, the reason it's so significant, obviously, is because it's a sign of injury. And, and what we're looking for, so we set our P wave, atrial depolarization. We have the hold in the AV node. Baby Q comes up for the R, comes down, and instead of coming back down to isoelectric, it just runs right over here. Where you see it notch or change directions, that is known as the J point. Okay, and and here for my J point, I scoop on over into my T. So what you do is there's little baby boxes on ECG paper, okay? And each little baby box is worth one millimeter of, of voltage. So these little boxes here, I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five little boxes that it's elevated from the isoelectric line. So this would be five millimeters of ST segment elevation. The more elevated you are, obviously, the more injury you're probably having at that time. Here, the QRS using the J point again. So here I don't have, I have my P wave. I don't have a Q. I have my R. I have my S. It comes back flat or isoelectric and it goes into my T, but you're looking where it notches or changes directions and that's called the J point. Um, here again, P wave. Here I've got my R, comes down from my S, starts to come back up, and then it just scoots on over and goes right into the T wave. So if here was my isoelectric line, this one it looks like I have about three millimeters of elevation. And usually one millimeter we don't really worry about. Um, one millimeter sometimes it's just um, lead placements, a little bit of a variance. But if you have two millimeters or more, then it's usually considered elevation or depression. And so here's an example of depression again. I've got the P wave, got the R wave. It comes down again. It goes iso. It, my isoelectric line, instead of being up here where it should have been, it's down here. So I would have three millimeters of depression. Now the T wave in most leads, the T wave is going to be positive. It's going to be upward. Inverted or negative T waves can be a sign of acute coronary ischemia, but sometimes we'll see that with bundle branch blocks. We might see it with, um, you know, if they have some type of conduction, conduction defect. Um, sometimes you'll see it with hypertrophy of the left ventricle or central nervous system disorder. And really tall or tented T waves, like symmetrical T waves, can indicate hyperkalemia. Flat T waves can actually be hypokalemia, so that's something to keep in mind too. So we are going to start looking at intervals next, and I thought we, this would be a good place to just kind of take a pause and just take a quick stretch, and then we'll continue.